Eric, let's t uh, it's time for our cash tag segment. For that, let's bring in our next guest. That's going to be Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Welcome back to the show, Landon. Thank you. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Uh, happy Monday to Lowe's investors. Uh, pretty good run so far this year off of those all-time highs. But we've seen a resurgence in Lowe's and Home Depot. They've already reported earnings. That stock's done really well. What kind of data do you have for us here on Lowe's? Yeah, Home Depot, you know, they reported some strong numbers, but the stock didn't really, uh, you know, react as well as the numbers were. So I think a lot of it was baked in. Uh, you know, they also talked about how some of their, their more affluent customers who are still in good shape were still putting off projects, which matches what Lowe's said their last quarter, right? I mean, they were talking about how inflation's high and people were pushing back big ticket items, pushing back projects. Uh, and that's just kind of the sentiment that we're getting uh, through our data as well, is people are still kind of waiting. I know that, you know, with the rate cut, you know, everyone's kind of expecting mortgages to come down and that to spur some home improvement as you switch houses. Uh, but we, I think everybody's kind of sitting on that and waiting right now because uh, mortgage rates are still just under 7%, very high. And when you look at what current Lowe's customers have, about 90% of Lowe's customers are homeowners and most of them have mortgages under 4%. So it's, you know, they're in a tough spot to go from four to seven to switch houses uh, to make that move. And then when you do, you know, you do all the projects. So I think a lot of it is kind of sitting and waiting, even the customers who are doing a little bit better. And that's, that's I think it's a bit of a concern for investors. Uh, we know the last quarter that home uh, Lowe's had uh, comp sales on do-it-yourself down about 5%. Their pro segment did better. I think they were up about 3%. Uh, and the, the pro users were up about 20% on a year-over-year -year basis. So strong numbers on the pro side, but that's only 25% uh, of their sales, right? I mean, that is more of a Home Depot thing. That's about half their sales. So you can see that their Lowe's, home, uh, Lowe's pro user growth is doing well on a year-over-year -year basis down from the summer, of course, um, but still doing well on a year-over-year -year basis. Uh, but again, it's a very small percentage uh, of their, their revenue, about a fourth compared to their counterpart, Home Depot, being half. So I think that's I think that's a bit of a concern is that the everyday user, the consumers out there are kind of waiting. They're pushing back big projects. You know, they still got the small project, but when it comes to, you know, big appliances or things that they might, uh, you know, take out a loan for or big projects that they're going to take a loan for, a home equity line of credit, whatever it may be, they're staring at those interest rates and they're saying, you know what, let's wait a little bit and let's see if it comes down. Uh, there is pent up demand. So once that happens, I think it's going to be really good for these companies, but I, you know, the data that we're seeing is showing that maybe we're not there just yet. Landon, this stock six months up twenty-one and a half percent, twelve months up thirty-four percent. So, all the cautionary tales we're talking about, not really showing up in the price of the stock. It's still pretty strong. Is there risks there of another? Remember, because Home Depot, they didn't put up any great numbers, and the stock rallied. Now it's lower after the fact because of the overall market but it rallied after earnings should we play this similar i'm not looking for six months or you know six days i'm not looking for six hours of trade here landon how do we right. play this if they put up a good number right i agree so look the the day that we've got on websites i think that's the that's the key for this one so uh, Home Depot down about eight points on web visits, Lowe's up about nine points on web visits. So we're actually seeing a movement more towards Lowe's. And I think that comes that comes on the lower bar, right? So remember, this is year over year change. Uh, so this isn't how many people went to Lowe's versus Home Depot. It's how many people went to Lowe's now versus they did a year ago, right? And so I think Home Depot had a higher bar a year ago, but Lowe's is starting to catch up. And I think that could play out a little bit. Um, again, uh, you know, based on what Home Depot said, everybody's pushing back their, their purchases. Lowe's said it last quarter. I don't see why it would change. But then I've got this data staring me at the face and saying that, you know, their web visits are up. And we know that 75 percent of their of their revenue comes from uh, consumers, not pros. So I think that's kind of the upside. Uh, they're also the stock has pulled back just a little bit, um, but it is up significantly, like you said. Uh, and and all of the, the good news, I guess, from Home Depot is baked in. So uh, it, this was a tough one to play. We've got a score of plus 18, which is right there on the edge where, you know, if it was plus 20, we'd say, all right, it's worth a bet. At plus 18, I think it could still be worth a bet if I had to pick 
I'd go up for sure, um, especially with a little bit of a pullback here and this web data making me say, all right, there might be something here that makes Lowe's outperform Home Depot. Uh, you always got to default to the data. I mean, the, the, the talking points that we've got on Lowe's are from last quarter, except for this data, which is showing you know promise and showing that maybe they're actually doing better than Home Depot, especially on the consumer side. We know that Home Depot did well on their pro side. The sales were up 6%. Uh, they had a lot of a pent up demand on the pro side, but on the, on the consumer side, you know, everybody's kind of weak right now, but these numbers tell me that maybe Lowe's isn't that weak and maybe we'll get a little bit of a surprise to the upside. Uh, it's not it's not strong enough data for us to, you know, to buy out of the money calls or anything like that. But I'm pretty confident, Kevin, you can structure a trade that takes advantage of some potential upside here. Uh, Landon, Kaboom! In, uh, in Home Depot, I mean, post their earnings, I, I thought that was just a mediocre report, but it seems like the pent up demand, the interest rates are going to come down. People, you know, uh, there's not enough supply out there. People are going to redo their houses. They're not moving out of a 3.5% mortgage and going up to a 7 So this is almost like a waiting game. And, you know, Wall Street's giving them the benefit of the doubt, and it's not data-based. Is that anything that you see here, Landon? Because until that 10-year goes back below 4%, I just can't imagine people doing big projects at this point. That that's everything that we've got saying the same thing. I agree. Yeah. Uh, everything is is we want to do project and we as consumer, uh, you know, we want to build the project. We want to do the expansion, renovate the house, whatever it is, but we're not willing to pay for it right now. Let's see these rates come down. Let's see the wallet book, uh, the wallet, you know, just get a little looser uh, and just have a little bit more money because right now things are a little bit tight. There is a lot of pent up demand and people want to do these projects. Um, I again, I'm encouraged by the website visits. It kind of conflicts with what Home Depot said uh, not too long ago and what Lowe said last quarter. And what a lot of our data says is that people are sitting on their hands uh, with, you know, desires to do projects, but waiting with the money. Uh, but the web visits, again, I think that, that that's kind of like the, the unknown element uh, that maybe investors aren't taking advantage of. Maybe they don't know about this yet. And maybe that's the thing that, that Lowe's comes out and says, you know what, our consumer segment is actually doing a lot better mm -hmm. uh, than Home Depot's did a couple of weeks ago. And they're doing a lot better than we, than we reported three months ago. So I think the the upside is more likely than the downside because of that, because mm -hmm. there's that kind of X factor baked in. And I think everyone like us is expecting the fact that nobody's moving from three and a half to seven. Uh, nobody's doing these big projects right now. They're all waiting. So if there's any kind of indication that that's sort of turning and we're, we're moving around the corner there and that we're wrong on that, then I think that the upside is the where is the way this stock's going to move. Yep, uh, and then the impact of the hurricanes, of course, are going to be a positive. If for are uh, waiting for 7% to go to 3.5, you could be waiting a long time. Oh, right. for, uh, yeah. For, People <laughs> might be realizing for, that. That's like, the thing. Like, they might just say, you know what, I give up. Let's do it yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think it goes back below 6, and we'll be okay. All right, great stuff. Uh, great data as always, Landon. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yep, that's Landon Swan, co-founder at Likefolio. Kevin, the option market pricing at about plus or minus $10 move in yep. the shares. Uh, so implied volatility.